Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Stalin Event in association with ARD and sanctioned by Ocean Boxing Federation Supervisor Vilibal Palatin along with IBA Supervisor Roberto Rea from Italy. Our three judges scoring this fight from the ringside will be Robin Taylor from USA, Pavel Carboni from Poland and Dave Paris from England. And the man in charge of the actions in the ring is the referee held from USA, Charles Dwyer. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, the fighter in the red corner, Indeo Neke, wearing red trunks with white trim. His official weight, 78.9 kilograms. Often nine kilogram. His record stands at 25 fights with 21 wins, three defeats and one no contest. Including eight wins inside the distance. 25 Kämpfe, 21 Siege, 8 K.O., 3 Niederlagen und 1 Kampf ohne Wertung. He hails from Madrid, Spain. Meine Damen und Herren, Damas y Caballeros. Please welcome the challenger, Gabriel Chico Guapo Campillo. <laughs> Introducing his opponent across the ring, the fighter on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, in their blue necker, wearing white trunks. Weight at 79.3 kilograms, 79.3 kilogram. His fine record, 25 fights, 24 wins and one defeat, including 14 KO wins. 14! 24 Siege, 14 KO und eine Niederlage. Heading from Berlin, Germany, ladies and gentlemen, my That was the MC, and he's quite brilliant, that young MC, bringing the two of them together, bringing the crowd together. This is one of the semi-finals, as I like to look at it. So we've got Campillo, oh. impossibly handsome. They call him the handsome man from Madrid. He's in the red shorts, coming out of the red corner, and we've got Car Cara Murat from Berlin. He knows how important this fight is, coming out of the red corner, the Sauerland fighter we're in brandenburg my name's steve bunce campillo tall tall for a light heavy sensible quality fighter and rather disgracefully completely ignored in spain which is a pity, really. Murat, well, those of you that watched his fight last September with the unbeaten Welshman Nathan Cleverly will know that he's never in a bad fight. He made that such an entertaining fight because he ended the fight a bit reckless, a bit ruthless, fearless, and that always makes for a good fight. Nathan obliged him and Nathan cleverly a very smart man with a fantastic degree from the University of Wales but in the ring tends to use his heart more than his head which is good for the fans gives his promoter and trainers a headache I can assure you can feel a good educated jab but don't be don't be deceived by his nickname of the handsome man he's not afraid to get involved Went 24 rounds with Bebert Shumanov, who's slightly harder than a rock. Lost one on a split decision, won one on a majority draw. There were some that thought he won easier the fight he lost than the one he actually got the decision on. There's a lot at stake here in this fight. Because if Murat were to win, he will fight Tavoris Cloud for the world title. 
and then down the line. I know from speaking to him over a steak and bowl of spaghetti earlier, he does very much fancy a rematch with Nathan Cleverley. But first of all, he's got to get past the tall southpaw from keep Madrid. Up, keep up, Campillo. Gab, Gabby Campillo. He fights like an unorthodox southpaw. Very herky jerky jab. Not a smooth southpaw. Keep up, keep up. Good solid body shot from you right there. Crowd, if you're not used to boxing in Germany, they're always quite subdued. They know their boxing, they love their boxing. They turn out in their thousands for their boxing, but they don't stand on their seats. It's not a night at the uh, you have at the historic London venue you'll call all night. So, that's the end of the first round. Not a lot in that round. The three wise officials. I'm going to say wise men, but there is a woman, a female judge. So the three wise officials will have to decide how they're going to split them. I'll give you my running updates after two or three rounds. We're in Brandenburg for international world championship in european boxing world champion steve cunningham defending his ibf cruiserweight world title against juan hernandez the cuban defector and then sebastian sylvester a local idol fighting for the european title against gregor proxa unbeaten unknown untested from poland but this is round two. But this is round two of the IBF's Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title between former world champion Gab Campillo from Madrid in Spain. Him, him, he's the one in the red shorts. Caro Murat from white shorts, familiar to viewers. I'm sure from his fantastic one of the international fights of the year against Nathan Cleverly last year. They were going to dispense with the ring after five rounds and move to a telephone booth. It was that type of fight. I like Murat, he's a good, honest man. Campillo looks that much more experienced. He's only a few years older at 32 and he's only had a few more. Uh, he's, only, he's, he's got basically he's had the same amount of fights, 25. One of his fights was... Uh, and no contest, so slightly different. But it just looks a bit more seasoned. I suppose that's what's happened when you go 24 rounds with someone like Babat Shumanov, WBA's champion, Teak Tough, as an understatement. Murat knows it's not going to be quick. Murat probably also knows it's not going to be easy in there tonight. Campillo fighting for a little bit of justice, having won European titles on the road and defended them on the road. World titles on the road, defended on the road, lost in world title fights on the road, now in what is, well, so according to my sources, an eliminator, not necessarily a final eliminator, but eliminator for the world title. Karamura in the white shorts, landing an unusual straight counter, which is incredible, even considering he's probably given away three or four inches in height and about five or six inches in Reach does look sharp tonight, Murat, with what he's throwing. Gabe Campillo looks comfortable, though. Touching him, these shots are only half-paced shots. Doesn't need to unload yet. He knows he's been in 12-round world title fights. Been up against it. Had the crowd on his back. Just touching, touching, touching. So I think the Spanish would love Campillo. You need to get him back in Spain if you're watching in Spain. This kid's a credit to your sport. A good pro, solid pro. That was a good sneaky left hook there. Suddenly went through the gears, landed it. He is a little bit lazy with his lead right hands. Gabe does leave himself slightly exposed to a short left counter. I would have thought Murat will switch to the body at some stage. Not bothered just yet. Still looking to pick him off. 
we're coasting, coasting through rounds here. Two seasoned, world-class performers. You often get that. That's the end of the second. There is Marco Hook at ringside, the great Captain Hook. We love him sitting next to Sourlands. Chris Meyer, Captain Hook, defends his world title, if I'm not mistaken, on the 22nd of October. That's available on various stations, various parts of the world. Captain Hook, I believe his only defeat against the man we're going to be watching later on, Steve Cunningham. Nice lead right there, that's the one I was a bit surprised got through, to be perfectly honest with you. We're ringside. Kara Murat split spoils at the moment. You've got to you got to separate guys even when there's not a lot happening. I'm giving it one apiece. Gabriel Kempilo, bit more, a bit more, not urgency, just a little bit longer, a little bit more meaningful. Moving through the gears, he's probably in, probably going at about half pace now. Still looks like an awkward southpaw to me. He's got something about the way he throws that right hook. It comes across a lot of you. You get a lot of shoulder with the punch. Marvin Hagler gave you a lot of shoulder with his punch. Sometimes he just gave you a lot of shoulder and no punch. But he was the marvellous one. American spelling marvellous, not UK spelling marvellous, obviously. Keep up, keep up. I would imagine this fight will slowly rise like a fine cake in another round or two. Murat just touching to the body, different pace, different shots. Murat from Berlin, which is about, I don't know, 240 odd k's a race, something like that. Takes you a couple of hours, they're not great roads. Unless, of course, you're in a car with Arthur Abrahams, who was, I think, Nick last night in Berlin for driving at 256 kilometers an hour in his Ferrari. That's about 170 miles, isn't it? Wow. Fast man, Arthur Abraham. So if you were driving with him, you'd be there in about 40 minutes. If you're not, then leave a bit longer. Murat just a bit busy here. I'm surprised at the ease with which his fight is picking off. Gab Gabriel Campillo, I'm just a bit surprised. Looks a bit sloppy, Campillo tonight. Just a little bit sloppy. Needs to just tighten it up a little bit. He also looks, actually, to be perfectly honest with you, extremely confident. We're live from New Brandenburg in the old east of Germany. Sauerland promotion, nice little combo there. Again, though, not a full pace, not a full stretch, not a lot of leverage in it, more leverage in that left. Yeah, awkward clubbing, cuffing shots that Campio throws. Decent amount of power in them, just caught Murat on the top of the brow there with that sweeping left. And he's got a good jab as well, Campio. I'd like to see him use that occasionally when he was standing off looking for shots. Just find the opening. Well, I thought it might take till about five rounds to warm up. It's not. It's already getting there now. That was the end of three. Okay. Sourland Promotions in charge tonight. Promotional company that started out unlike, well, unlike most promotional companies in the world. It started out in Lusaka, Zambia. I mean, Don King's fairly lively. Frank Warren in the UK is fairly lively, but they never cut their teeth in the promotional business in Lusaka, did they? That was Wilfred Sourland, the father of Bo of Kala and Nis, who run the business now, effectively run the business now. Only Kala's ringside tonight. Nis is on is a, a London on business, and Wilfred is in South Africa, watching, I believe. 
Welcome to, to the transmission if you're watching Wilfred in London. No, not the Welsh one, but the South African one. Round four here in New Brandenburg. It's the IBF Inter continental light heavyweight title 12 rounds at three minutes each round the white shorts coming out the blue corner Kara Murat against the former world champion from Spain from Madrid no less the handsome man who's under pressure but taking them on his hands taking them on his gloves taking them on his shoulders taking a couple of the top of his head but then smiling and then holding and as I said at the start of this broadcast don't be fooled by Campillo's nickname He's also brave, he's game, he's not afraid of being a fight. Which is handy, because if you've chosen the profession of boxing as a way to make your living, it is beneficial to your job prospects if you don't mind having a fight. Murat taking most of those on his elbow, just like Campillo was taking most of those on his elbow. Campillo just works well with that right jab, that big jolting right jab Ooh, that comes that down at an angle. And Murat's almost got no defense against okay. it. I'm surprised that Campillo's not used more of that jab. Just keep whacking that jab down from an angle, crashing it in behind the glove. There's a bit of a Marvin Hack the shot there. Right hook, right elbow, right hook, right shoulder. Famous Marvin Hagler, quartet of punches. Slightly low, Campillo's not, not going to complain. This season, the powder puff punch to the privates. No, we're nothing to worry about. Just to let you know, in case you've not noticed him, he certainly hasn't had anything to do on here. He is Charles Dwyer. Welcome to the show, Charles. Great to have you in. Great to have you slowly involved. Finally involved. It's the fourth round here. Murad Campillo. For the unofficial right to challenge to Boris Cloud for the world title. I've been warning throughout the broadcast about the heat. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by it being October the 1st. It is sweltering in there. It is dangerously hot in there. The boxers are savage. They could become savagely dehydrated in long fights. And I think they're probably all making adjustments. And they've been making adjustments in the last two days for it. It's opened up this fight. It's a lot, it's a lot more open, a lot quicker than I expected. Both land in freely. That right, a short right from Campillo does seem to have made Murat winch once or twice. That's the end of four. No panic in any of the corners. The handsome one there in slow-mo. Not afraid to take a few shots, taking them on his hands comfortably on the top of his head. Not bothered by those punches, perfectly in control. He's got a great defense, he just buries his, buries his chin somewhere. And we're down by his shoulder. A little bit of damage around Murat's eye, the end swell, I believe, is on that. Not a good sign in, this, in these conditions. It's hot, fighters are dehydrated. Swellings get worse, and they get worse rapidly. Round five in New Brandenburg with me, Steve Bunts. Kara Murat in the white shorts. Gabriel Campillo in the red shorts. It's the fifth round, fairly tight so far. Rounds decided by fractions. Both boxers taking an awful lot of shots on their gloves. It's a 12-round fight for the IBS international belt and the unofficial right to move forward and challenge Tavares Cloud for the world title because Murat wants a rematch with Nathan Cleverly who stopped him in 10 blistering rounds last September in Birmingham. 
in the Midlands. Midlands of England, that is. Just want to try and get a look at that slight swelling. Oh, no, it's nothing. Around Murat's left eye. That is the spot, though, where the rare and occasional straight jabs from Kempio have been landing. Murat needs to block those punches. Even if there's not a lot of power in them, you don't want to be taking five and six punches because those are scored by the judge. Even if they're not hurting you, not going to knock you out, they are scored by the judge. Murat maybe needs to concentrate more on those headshots. Bring it around that right hand. He's dropped a couple of rights behind Campillo's guard once or twice. Campillo looks composed, looks comfortable. Certainly throwing more punches. Is he landing more punches? Yes, he probably is. Certainly in this round. Is he hurting Murat? I don't think so. Although you can't take too many. He's certainly hurting with that right. Murat dropped his guard to showboat and got caught as he dropped his guard. Stupid mistake. Schoolboy error, schoolboy error. If you're going to showboat, do what Nassim Hamid, the great Nassim Hamid, the great Muhammad Ali and the great Sugar Ray Leonard did. Move out of distance before you showboat. Don't showboat in distance. <laughs> Didn't really hurt him, though. And you know who knew it most? Campillo. Otherwise, he would have opened up. It was a good shot. Campillo needs to put two punches, and then just when Murat thinks it's over, he needs to drop a third in. Bang. That's the sucker punch. And it would work every time. Training round this under the fifth. Looks like it's the 11th. Look at the two of them. Good little short shot there, that little left hand. From the handsome one, Chico Guapo. Apologies to the Spanish speakers listening. If I butchered the pronunciation, but Chico Guapo sounds decent to me. Hard round this. Hard fifth round. Very hard fifth round. Three judges will sit in ringside. Those with the slow motion shots took three or four on his gloves. Was just about to lower his hand when it came in. Need to concentrate slightly more. Fight still very open. Campillo in front. By my cards, extremely unofficial. In fact, it's unofficial, unofficial. Britain, New Brandenburg, Sauerland Promotion, International Boxing, World Championship Boxing, and European Boxing. Coming up, Steve Cunningham against Juan Hernandez and then local idol Sebastian Sylvester against the unbeaten Polish boxer Gregor Proxa for the vacant European middleweight title here we go round six of already a fairly draining fight not quite a war of attrition that gets thrown around far too often but just quite hard, quite draining. Well, two world-class fighters from a world champion. Campillo in the red against a guy that desperately wants to be a world champion. That's Murat in the red. In the white shorts, in the, in the blue corner. Awful lot of rounds ahead in this fight, and they just look. It looks like it's later in the fight. Decent. That's that third shot. That's the combination that Campillo needs to put together. There it is. He put it together there with a the final right hook, just slightly short. Come on, game. Was it dead on stage? Neither of them breathing heavy, it's just you need to be ringside to just to get the sense that they're both feeling the heat. Not not saying tiring, that's probably too dramatic, but they're feeling they are feeling the heat. That was a good short left hook. Another inch on the turn, and that would have crashed down on the chin. It may have been different. That was a good punch. 
Campillo doing the sensible thing, stepping back a place and calling him in. Can't get to him, can he? It's a brilliant way to buy five seconds. That was a scathing, fantastic short right hook. And that was a hurtful punch. Murat felt that, trapped on the ropes. Murat needs to either cover up from these punches or respond. Because even if they're not hurting him, he's losing the rounds because of them. And they're loose and lazy shots from Campillo. I like the punches, but it's not like he's putting them under pressure. He's unloading with three and landing constantly. Crowd trying to lift their fighter with a Berlin base. Murat's only a couple of hours away. Kalasauerland will try and get Murat a world title fight after this. Perhaps a deal can be done with Campillo for a world title fight. That man, the man they're chasing is Tavoris Cloud. That's better from Murray, but he needs to hold his hands up. Campillo doing, doing the right thing here. Fighting when he needs to fight, resting when he needs to rest. Picking him off, throwing smart punches. Boxing, clever. That's the best combination from Murat since about the first round. A fine end, a fine, fine end to round six. I think Murat took too many punches there, not necessarily hurtful punches, but scoring punches. A fantastic flurry towards the end of the round. He's taking its toll. Around me, I'm looking at people perfectly well dressed and civilized looking people whose shirts are drenched. It's that type of night. It's a hot night in New Brandenburg for this Sauerland promotions. Or Sauerland events, I believe they're called. Wilfred Sauerland, the man that set the promotional company up, not in Cologne, not in Berlin, but in Lusaka in Zambia. Here we go, round seven with me, Steve Buds. It's New Brandenburg, it's Sauerland events, international, world, and European boxing. Point. Referee Charlie Dwyer doing the second thing he's had to do all night and just asked them, asking them to move out of the ring a little bit quicker. Come on, fellas, I've got a fight on here. Campillo caught and forced back at the end of the previous round. That's Campillo in the red shorts, the full world champion. Carlo Murat forced him back, but he had, I think, lost the previous two minutes and 30 odd seconds. Needs to either block a few more punches or work a bit more. Cairo Murat. He may be winning on power shots, as they like to say, in certain places, but he's certainly not winning by scoring shots. He's an honest kid. I'd like to find out after the fight how the heat affected him. because it is draining. It's draining in front of the ring lights for any fighter. It's particularly draining when you're fighting in this heat. I'm not sure what it is, but I would be amazed if it's not about 85, 90. Air conditioning not being something that's inside the stadium. Maybe in the bars and the toilets, but it's not ringside. He's just getting picked off, Carl Murat. It just seems like he's getting picked off. His jaw's down. He just looks a bit tired. And, it, it, and Campillo will, will, will end up dropping him with that third punch. One, two, and the third punch will drop him. Because he goes off balance from the first two, and he'll end up slinging the third and catching him. Slinging being a technical boxing term, you could use throwing or landing the third. Murat needs to have his opening his burst slightly earlier in the round. Now, I don't want to be the man to say that that looked like desperate work, but it did look like desperate work for Murat there. And Campillo probably sensed it. Murat breathing extremely heavily, very tired. Suddenly, his feet are in quicksand. That's a clean, good shot. Murat firing at thin air. Campillo picking him off, needs to 
mix it now, mix it up perfectly between putting the pressure on and not going all out. Murat needs to get back in this fight by trying to establish himself. Campillo needs to stay in this fight by landing those one and two punch combinations and getting on away for the inevitable swiping. There doesn't seem to be a lot in Murat's punches. There's a lot in his heart, but there's not a lot in his punches, and he's wobbled back again now. Look for the third shot, and he's going to end up taking him out here. I can sense it. Campillo coming back to the corner, looking very relaxed. He's the only man in the nearest ten rows to ringside who's not suffering from the heat. Murat, this is only the eighth round we're going into now. I've got him down, I've got him hurt, I've got him looking tired, I've got him throwing desperate lunges, his body language isn't right. If you're watching this and you're a professional athlete or an amateur athlete, not even a boxer, that the body language from Murat isn't right. Look at that. If your son's playing soccer, if your daughter's playing cricket, if your little girl's a swimmer and they have a face like that, then you know they're not happy, whether they're 11 or whether they're 21. Campillo blocking most shots, eyes on it. Take it out, let's go. Here we go. It's going to be round eight soon. Charles Bright brings them together. Cool. Round eight. IBF, Intercontinental, light heavyweight title, New Brandenburg. I'm Steve Bunce. This is a Sauerland event in Germany. International world and European boxing. This is an IBF Intercontinental fight. Karen Muret looked tired in the previous round. Campillo, the full world champion from Spain, looked fresh. This is the eighth. Let's go again. that looping, it's those looping right hand jolting jabs that are almost like hooks. They don't seem to have missed from about round three. And whenever, whenever Campillo drops that left over, he seems to catch him. Murat's trying for that short left hook. He's been trying for it all the time. But he's taking six or seven to land it. He's being pushed back by the second shot. He's slightly off balance, and that's when Campillo can drop the hook, drop the big looping right hook, and take him out on a straight southpaw left. Murat's punches. But as an expression, it's like you're moving in treacle. It looks like his punches are punching through treacle. It's like he's going through an invisible treacle curtain between him and Campillo. It's a bit of sticky imagery for you, but you get the picture. One thing that won't be diminished by the heat and won't be diminished by Campillo's jolting south for right hooks is the size of Cairo Murat's heart. But Campillo's got it in his heart, he's in his head. Oh, that's the third shot. I like that third shot. Come on, Caro. The crowd are singing, come on, Caro, behind me. I think it's just a member of his family, but they are saying it. Come on, come on. That's what Caro's got to do. He's got to make it ugly. He's got to get a bit close, get his shoulder, get his head in there. Get a bit of Marvin Hagler at work here. These are good shots from Gabe Camp Campillo. This is a big re-establishing fight for him. Who knows, perhaps even a third fight with the deep, tough Kazakh, Bebat Shumanov. They won a piece at the moment. Campillo, Shumanov in world title fights. Both of them tight, tight. 24 controversial rounds. Ooh, that's a good left hook, but it's a lunge and desperate shot. Campillo needs to keep it sensible. Murat needs to make him forget his boxing. That's what makes fights entertaining. Murat in the corner does not look happy. Doesn't look happy. Get his hands down early. Get his hands down. He needs to breathe. Get his hands down.
Du hast doch einen Treffer, der ist da auch fertig. Der nimmt doch viele Treffer zwischendurch. Chico Guapa, the handsome man from Madrid. That's the nickname the Gab Campillo uses. He looks, he, he looks in the corner, Campillo. He looks incredibly relaxed and calm. Which is going some, considering... We've had eight rounds, fairly frantic. The last six rounds have been at a terrific pace. Here we go, round nine. We're in New Brandenburg for this, the ninth round of the IBF Intercontinental title fight between the defending champion, Caro Murat and the former world champion from Spain, but he's a man, had bag, will travel, almost homeless. And that's a crime, getting back in Madrid from Barcelona to kick and fight, Gab Campillo. It's been hard, it's been draining. That was a terrific left hook, the best left hook. But Murat's landed for a long time, and it looks like the first one, in my opinion, that seems to have shaken slightly, Campillo, but he's done the sensible thing, he's moved back, he's smiling, he's breathing heavy. Murat had been on the end of it for a few rounds, taking too many punches, breathing heavy, like he's doing now. Campillo will regain his composure. Not necessarily a seesaw fight, but you can't take your eyes off it. In this heat, knockouts come from one single solitary second and moment of class. Murat trying, uh, I mentioned earlier, probably about five rounds ago. If I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. You can, you know, he may be tired, he may be exhausted, he may be hurt, but you'll never beat his heart. But then I added quickly, self quip, they call that. But Campillo's not hitting. Murat's heart. He's in his chin, he's in his head. Draining, draining fight. Still three full rounds to go after this. Slight mark, slight mouse underneath Murat's left eye. That's not a big problem. That's sensible boxing from Campillo. Not power shots, two and three jabs. Bang, that gives you a good few seconds of breather. A good percentage of a round to be in control. Slightly low, we're not bothered about that though. Campillo is putting the pressure on slowly. Murat's got that one big left. If he can land it just a fraction low, it just needs to be two inches lower. It's landing a bit high on the jaw. If that could come down, he could pull this off. He's got to drag Campillo off that back foot. He's got to drag Campillo into a bit of a fight. Murat's one of my favourite warriors. I saw him against Nathan Cleverly last year when he showed tremendous heart. He looked like he was suffering four, three or four rounds ago. He's pushed through the pain barrier repeatedly. Campillo, he's forcing Campillo to fight. Now it's time for the body shots, Murat said. You saw, that's a good left foot. Right to the body, left foot. That's what Murat needs to do, but how much has he got left? Oh, this is turning into a hot one here in New Brandenburg. Nice draining fight to start your evening's coverage. Bit of action there. Good action too. I think that was when he just started to get to him. Just slowed down a bit in that round, Campillo, to me. Just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. That's all you needed, though. Just gave you a, just that bit of his arm, just a little bit. You're strong, right? Man, you come here, then you're a champ. You're so unfair. Sonst würde er sich doch wehren, ne? Crowd Aber here, musst, nearly up to capacity, which is even raus. four or five, Oder depending on aus, who you speak to. It's good, oh, though. Komm, komm. Du reißt hier zusammen. It's a good crowd, komm, the German crowd. Du musst da haben, hast du gehört? Noch drei Runden, dann ist alles vorbei, mein Junge. Du schaffst das. Los! We're in round 10 here, Charles Dwyer, the American referee, brings them together. He's been the invisible man, Charles the Ghost Dwyer, I'm going to call him. He hasn't had to do anything yet. 
in the last round. Murad, who looked tired, managed to land with enough punches to force Campillo to change his expression. El Chico Guapo was no longer smiling. He's come out well and well and fast and sharp in this round, though. Former world champion from Spain in the red shorts, Gab Campillo. Going back, and as the corner would have told him, they told him, box, they said, use your jab. They said something in English, that's why I called it. And that's what he can do. He's got a great jab. He's got a really awkward, jolting southpaw jab that just turns slightly into a hook. That's what's caused the facial damage to Cairo Muret's left cheek. Muret's jaw slightly open, as is Campillo. And let me just explain to you, if you've just tuned in from wherever you're watching this, it is sweltering in here. We're in the eastern part of Germany. It is October the 1st, but we may as well be in a ball ring in Venezuela in July. It's got that kind of sweaty feel to it. Murat having less success in this round than he did in the previous round. Good short combinations. That was the story of the fight for three or four rounds in the middle. Murat taking too many shots, looking to land one single shot and not finding the opening for the single shot and then having to go back to the drawing board. In fact, the only man who's not sweating is Charles the Ghost Wire. I want to ask him what the Odin he's using when this fight's over because that man is so calm. Look at him. Got a bead of sweat on his brow. We're getting to, and I thought we would by about round 10, that stage where the two boxers are throwing the type of shots that if they miss, leave you open. But if they land, leave you the winner. draining 10 rounds of boxing so far two more to come a world title fight a european title fight to come as Murat unloads pushes him back he's got a way of looking Murat, like he's got nothing left and then he just keeps throwing the punches he plants his short sturdy feet and his short stocky legs and he just unleashes that left hook it's a terrific shot he rolls it over campillo does not look as composed now in my scorebook, he's got six and a half minutes to stay on his feet. Nice short right, but now Murat's walking through them. Terrific, terrific, terrific shots there from Murat. There was a moment there when he looked like Jake LaMotta in one of his famous fights. Look at this. Oh yes, we like fights like this. We like we like it when it gets like that. Gabriel Campillo, I think it was ironic when he was named that Hang handsome on. man. That was to you fool his opponents in into, into that's deceiving that's his opponents into believing they were fighting a guy that was more bothered about his mascara than his punch. Well, forget it. It's a nickname. He's tough. He's hard. And Cara Murat, well, I tell you what, if you took Cara Murat's heart out, he'd only be a lightweight. That's how big it is. That's how heavy it is. I like him a lot. I liked him last year when he got stopped by Nathan Cleverly. I'm liking him in this fight tonight. I've got him behind, but not by much. It is hard. It is tough in there. It's hot. And suddenly, the last the round and a half, Gab Campillo started to look, started to look slightly weary. Not surprising. It's hot here. You should see a picture of me and see how weary I look, and I'm just doing the commentary. Here we go. Penultimate round. IBF Intercontinental light heavyweight title, but there's more at stake tonight than a gold little ball with a few fake diamonds in it. In the red corner, Gabriel Campillo, former world champion from Spain. And in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks from Berlin, it's Caro Murat. They both had moments in control, they both had moments taking punches. And they both earned their dollars and their euros and their francs this evening in there. Three referees at ringside, two, two men and a woman, and the super cool referee, the white shaft as I call him, Charles Dwyer.
Murat needs to make sure that he avoids the inevitable and generally pinpoint counters from Campillo. If he can do that, he could nick this fight. If he keeps landing two and then getting caught with three, he's going to lose. That was a sensational short right uppercut and a good light looping left, straight left, southpaw left that went in, crashed in a bit high. Oh, that was a damaging short right hook. And what's more, Campillo looked for it. Campillo teeing up here. I'm not sure he's got. I'm not sure he's got five, four and a half minutes of non-stop punching. I think he's going to pick his shot. Murat's picking his. Anything above the waist will do. Any part of the Spanish skin above that white belt will do. I'll hit it. That's a fantastic short right hand counter. How can a guy who's that tired throw a shot like that in the 11th round? That was Tatford. And now he's back to being Jake Lamotta. It's no wonder that Caro Murat is a big favourite here in Germany. Once this kid gets a world title, he may not hold it for 10 years. He might not make 21 defences like Sven Ocke, but they'll come out and they'll adore him. He's not faking, he's got to hold on now. Murat's in desperate trouble here. Still looking to counter, he could hold. Campillo, not necessarily out on his feet, but he's certainly out on one foot. He's tired as well. Murat seems to have got a second win from that moment when he was staggered from a couple of shots. 10 second reminder boys, you've got 10 seconds, this Murat who finishes stronger. Still looking to throw, what a three minutes we have here in Prospect. What a final three minutes, that was it, a short right hook. Murat was hurt there, his legs sagged understandably. He stumbled back, but Campillo, hey. He may still be. That's the handsome one in Spanish. At least I hope it is. I hope it's not rude. I hope someone hasn't given me the wrong nickname. There's a bit of a joke on me. No, I'm only joking. I know it's Chico Guapo. Touch gloves. Charles, the ghost Dwyer, has told them. And we are in for three minutes here. Or maybe not, because... Both of these fighters, both of these fighters could succumb before the final bell. It's the 12th and final round here in New Brandenburg and it has been a fantastic fight. Slow couple of rounds and then it came alive. In the red corner, wearing the red trunks, the Spanish fighter, Gabriel Campillo, the former world champion. And in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks from Berlin, one of the German favourites, Caro Murat. They've each had moments in control, segments in control, not whole rounds or two rounds in control. In the previous round, it looked to me that Murat was hurt, but he's been hurt before in this fight and come back. It's going to be hard, I think, for the judges to do the full separation job because they've both had moments in control. They've shared, they've shared half the grounds. There's three wise people sitting at ringside who will earn their few dollars this evening by pulling these two apart. The crowd, well, it's in Germany. Murat's a favourite. Cracking left hook. Campillo, though. Quality boxer, he's shown some beautiful boxing skills tonight, some fantastic southpaw stuff. I love awkward southpaws, and he, and he is an awkward southpaw. I hope if you're watching in Spain, you can bring him home because he's had to win European titles and world titles and defend them on the road, and that's wrong. This guy deserves to be a superstar in Madrid or Barcelona or Bilbao. Put him on in Benidorm, get the Brits there in the summer, they'd love him. It's hard round for Murad, he's having very little success. He's just about reached the end of it now, and there's still a minute left, 70 seconds left. Campillo could pull off a stoppage here, one big short hook. 
Murat doing his job. Look what you for to the right hand. And Capio's legs have absolutely gone. Absolutely gone. There's no smile now. The crowd are standing. That's a rare sight in the German boxing arena as Murat unloads for the last 30, 40 seconds. He's lost the round up until now and he's coming back. A fantastic shot and Campillo's legs are gone. His legs are still jelly. It's hot in that ring. This is indeed a memorable, draining and savage fight. Quality fight, another two left hooks from Campillo. Back to the jab, he may have got his senses back. Has he done enough to win the round with the start? Yes, he probably has. Will the judges be swayed? They're only human beings by a crowd of 5,000 screaming. Yes, they probably will. He's waving to the crowd in the last 10 seconds. Perhaps that's premature. Perhaps it's not. Perhaps I've read it wrong. Perhaps you're watching a different fight. It's over. That was 12 sensational rounds. Well, we're going to go to the judges. Murat exhausted, rightly so. Campillo exhausted, <clears throat> and unfairly horse as well, to tell you the truth. We've still got two championship fights to come here tonight. The IBF Cruiserweight World Championship between Steve Cunningham and the Cuban Juan Hernandez, and then <clears throat> the fight that the fans in here have really come to see. That's the vacant European middleweight title fight between Sebastian Sylvester, a local idol, and I mean local idol in this part, New Brandenburg in the old East Germany, against the Polish, the unbeaten but unknown and relatively untested Polish fighter, Gregor Proxer. That's to come. We've got 24 more rounds of championship boxing to come. And this fight we've just seen, which has turned into what they call in fiction a slugfest and what they should also call in fact a slugfest on paper I didn't see this fight like this I saw Campillo boxing more but he had no option he had to go and slug I saw Murat picking his shots a bit more but he had no option he had to go and slug because he was being picked off we're with the judges at the moment will it be tight will it be drawn oh. We will find out very shortly. Crowd here poised, silent. As I say, the German crowd are not known for jumping around, but they know their boxing. They enjoy their boxing. They love their boxing, and they turn out. And if you've ever been at a fight, there's 5,000 in here. It's terrific. Then you go to a big Sauerland promotion, like the Value Evan Hay fight or the Klitschko fight, that's when it gets interesting. That's when they come out 50, 60,000 of them. They know how to put on a promotion here in Germany. Solid, entertaining undercards. Marco Huck, a good friend of Kara Murat over there looking over the judges' shoulders, trying to get an insight into the... trying to get an edge on the score in there. It seems to be a bit of confusion. There's a bit of a... There's a bit of a gathering over in the far, on the far side of the ropes where they're, they're adding up totals, trying to obscure totals from prying cameramen, prying journalists and prying boxers. Um, I quite like that, it's a bit of anarchy going on over there. I'm all for that, in my youth I would have been in the thick of that, trying to get the score before everybody else. Anyway, Charles Dwyer, he's so cool, I've, did, I've nicknamed him the White Shaft, he doesn't sweat. The man that doesn't sweat, that's his, that should be his nickname. Whatever the Latin is for that, that should be underneath his business card. Pair, Charles Dwyer, a pair of boxing gloves and the Latin for the man that doesn't sweat. We're trying to get a decision here. We've got an unofficial decision being, has been passed to us. But uh, it's been passed to some fellas to my left. And, um, well, they're Germans. We're in Germany. They're not going to share with me. Murat doesn't look overly stressed. Given a slight interview, Campillo, well, I think he's still trying to get his breath. 
left. There's a woman there, a blonde woman in blue. I'm not sure if you can see it on the international feed. She's in charge, it looks like, of compiling the scores. We're getting closer to a score here. A decision here. Here we go. Before we declare the winner, how about a round of applause for both fighters? After 12 hard-fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are the score totals. Pavel Cardini, 115 to 113. 115 to 113. Robin Taylor, 111. 111, 117. 111, 117. Dave Paris, 114, 114. 114, 114. We have a draw. It's a draw. Even Sweden. Excuse me. Excuse me. You speak English? Um, was that is uh, big hands for both fighters? Capillo? Yeah. Pavel uh, Cardini. Yeah, that's the Taylor, uh, Taylor for, for uh, yeah, and then a draw. Well, what a demonstration of endurance, heart, will, a pulsating bout here on Box Nation. A real slugfest in that IBF title eliminator. The result is a draw. Plenty of post-fight analysis to come from George Grove and Dean Powell. That's after the break. And remember, we've got Steve Cunningham defending his IBF cruiserweight crown. So don't go away. We'll be right back after the break with all of that. <laughs>